They had a thing in the paper about they were casting a thing for the Mickey McGuire comedies, Tunerville Trolleys. So uh, my mother uh, went down, and I, I had toe head. I was blonde when I was young. And uh, they said, well, he's fine, but Mickey McGuire has black hair. So she, uh, he says, she says, well, I'll fix that. And so she said, can I come back tomorrow? And he said, sure. So uh, we'd like to see him. So uh, she put black shoe polish on my hair. And uh, they didn't have anything in those days. And uh, I came back and I had black hair and I got the part. Believe it or not, I named Mickey Mouse. I went for lunch one day and they broke for lunch at this old rickety studio, the Darmore Studios on, uh, I think it was Hollywood Boulevard. We, I went through the rickety studio and there was a silhouette and I poked my head in and I said, hello, who's you, who are you? And the voice says, what's your name? I said, my name is Mickey McGuire, what's your name? And the voice came back and says, Walt Disney. And he said, come on in Mickey, I want to show you something. So I went in. And he said, sit on my lap. And so I sat on his lap. And he said, I want to show you something. So he showed me a picture of a mouse. I said, it's a terrific mouse, Mr. Disney. What do you call him? He says, Mortimer Mouse. He said, I said, well, that's terrific. He said, I'm glad you liked it, Mickey. And he stopped. He said, Mickey, Mickey. Mickey, how would you like it if I named this mouse after you and called him Mickey Mouse? I said, well, that'd be wonderful, Mr. Disney, but right now I have to go get a cheese sandwich down the drugstore. There is no such thing as formal training. They might think so, but not really. You have to have it in your heart. First thing you know, it was there. I think it was when Milton Berle came on. He was called Mr. Television. And uh, I don't know what company he worked for, but he made an awful lot of money, and he was on the show for a long time. I was on his show, and it was... Uh, it was fun doing his show. He had a million writers, and uh, they they all they they put them together. I think in two days, and uh, they rehearsed a half a day, and they shot them that night. It was a lot of fun doing it. Milton was a great comedy uh, artist. Sid Caesar was coming along, and later on we would do a picture called Mad 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 World, cool. where we had Sid Caesar and uh, Jonathan Winters, and Peter Falk, and uh, all of us doing Mad, 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 Mad World. That's, that's an awful thing to call it, uh, you know. I think it's terribly presumptuous to call it that. No wonder it failed. Uh, I don't know how many shows we did, but uh, I was proud to be with NBC. I'm only sorry that it fell on its face. I think my agent and uh, the people at NBC wanted me on. I was popular in those days, and they wanted me on. I don't even remember the show, whether we shot it in Los Angeles or whether we shot it in New York, I don't know. The Comedian with uh, Mel Torme and Edmund O'Brien, and that was an exciting thing to do. It was Playhouse 90 and it was done in 90 minutes. Uh, that's why it was called Playhouse 90. All I know that I was on the set doing it and uh, uh, we rehearsed it once and Mr. Frankenheimer came into my dressing room and said, that's magnificent, Mickey. I said, well, you haven't seen anything yet. John, wait till we do the show tonight. And uh, he liked it so much, he said, that's it. He was a mean, brash guy and uh, everything that I, I'm not. And uh, I, I think that when you're playing a, a part, you're just doing it because it's a part. And it's not something that you really are. You do it the best of your ability. Of course not. Even when I did Bill, a lot of people asked me if I did research for Bill. No, I didn't. And I won the Emmy for that. Good comedians make great dramatists. It's hard for dramatists to become a good comedian. And uh, I don't know whether that worked out for me or not, but I, I've enjoyed every step of the way of it. Oh, nobody influences me ever. I just do what I have to do, the best of my ability. Now, wait a minute, I'll talk about that later. Frankly, I don't give a damn. <laughs> well, I haven't been given any advice. I wish they had given me advice a long time ago. I wouldn't have made the mistakes. I think everybody makes mistakes today, but uh, uh, you try your best not to, and you go on doing your job. It's on the David Susskind Show in New York when I 
I did uh, uh, a picture with Anthony Quinn and uh, Jackie Gleason called uh, Requiem for a Heavyweight. The day I was on it, the little girl came on it and everybody, and she was crying, laughing, and crying. And uh, her name was Barbara Streisand. And I said, what are you crying about? And she said, well, they're laughing at my nose. I said, don't you ever change your nose. You're, you've got the most wonderful voice in the world. And she said, thanks, Mickey. And later on, she sent me a picture of herself. Eddie was a gambler, I think, and uh, he lost his money. And uh, uh, it, it, uh, it was a sad tale. How terrible can that be? Why would I call it Mickey? And they, they called it, somebody called it Mickey. I didn't call it Mickey. But uh, I know why it failed, because it was called Mickey. I mean, how dare you call the show Mickey? All I remember was that we tried very hard and it failed. It was wonderful because Judy had a wonderful dressing room and they had a yellow brick road leading from uh, her dressing room down to the stage. And uh, uh, it was wonderful working with Judy. And uh, I did a routine on her show called The Golf Thing and it was one of Judy's favorite things that I did. Nothing had changed. It seemed like it was only Yesterday we had worked together on Girl Crazy and Strike Up the Band and Babes in Arms. I found Sammy Davis Jr. I brought him to the fore. I didn't discover his talent. He's always has talent. I took him with me on my tour that I had, and Judy was with us. They put the black people up very in the in the about the sixth or eighth floor, and they wouldn't let him down near the stage in those days. And uh, so he came down one day and he said to me, Mick, uh, Mr. Rooney, and I said, what do you mean, Mr. Rooney? You know my name, Sam. It's Mickey. He says, well, I just didn't want to do anything wrong. I said, you're not doing anything wrong. I said, what's, what's troubling you, Sammy? He said, well, I want to sing. And I want, outside of dance, I know how to dance, but I, I want to sing and do impressions. I want to do voices and this and that. And I said, well, do them. He said, but you don't understand. I'm black. I said, really? I didn't notice. And we were friends right at the end. He was a great talent, and there'll never be another Sammy Davis Jr. Well, Jack Parr and I didn't get along too well, I don't think. He, uh, he had insulted me in the, uh, on the uh, air, and I, I said, well, then maybe I'd better go. And he said, maybe you'd better. So I, I left the show. And of course, there was a big to-do about that. But we became friends later on. I went up to his apartment and apologized, and he apologized. We became good friends. Those things should never be left undone. I always had something to, to sell on the Johnny Carson show. And uh, of course, he didn't like that, and because uh, I hadn't cleared it with anybody. And uh, they never asked me back again. <laughs> That was Clint Eastwood, I think, his first or second performance. I said to him, I said, Clint, you're going to be a big star one day. He says, oh, come on, Mick, I'm not going to be a big star or anything like that. Well, proof was in the pudding. And he went on and on and on, and now Clint Eastwood is one of the biggest, which he should be. Nobody was funnier. He and Imogene Coca, God, nobody was funnier on television than Sid and... He was so great in the picture, Mad, 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 Mad World. Wonderful friend of ours. Great performer. I did one Lucy show uh, with her, and she was brilliant. Bill Sector was his name, and he was a, a wonderful man, and he had trouble. And that, why they wanted to do it, I don't know, but I did it, and I won the Emmy for it. And my wife was with me, Jan was with me, and uh, it was a wonderful moment for Jan and myself. He was an impaired man, and how do you talk about that, you know? And I, I did him to the best of my ability. Dennis Quaid was in it with me. That's the same thing, only it was a little bit later. I think Bill had passed away, and we, uh, we did it. I don't think it was as good the second time around as it was the first. That was with... Uh, 
uh, Dana Carvey and uh, Nathan Lane. What great talents they both were and are today. Look at what's happened to Nathan. I'm so happy for him. He's such a great artist. It takes an awful lot of work to make a show work. And uh, I guess maybe it was my fault or somebody else's fault. I don't know. I don't like to blame anybody. Well, that was Rankin and Bass. They created that, and uh, uh, I played Santa Claus in one. Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> my friend Fred Astaire was one of the voices in it, too. And uh, they're, they're fun to do, a lot of voices. Yes, you bet. That I was a nice guy and that I tried. I did my work well. They ask me when I'm going to retire. I say, I'm not going to retire. I inspire. 